Now there are other there are other problems and, and hassle factors that you can get into with all of this. Um, they, I've not really seen it in 4K discs, but some quantity of, of older Blu-rays have what they call playlist obfuscation, where uh, a, a given a given movie may be made up of like 20 different segments uh, in the structure, and there could be what would it be two to the 20th or no, uh, 20 factorial uh, combinations of playlists on the disc, dozens, hundreds of combinations of playlists on the disc with all of those segments in different orders. Why do they do that? To, to stop you from doing stuff like this. How do you know which is the right one? Well, spend a couple hours in, in trial and error, watch the movie through and, and, and make sure that you get, you get the result in the right order. Um, or hope that somebody else, right, on the Make MKV forums or, or somewhere online has already figured it out. And for the specific disc release that you have, uh, ha has identified, oh, you want playlist 573. So you rip that one and you, you ignore all the others. I guarantee you there's people out there with movies uh, ripped from standard Blu-ray, HD Blu-rays into their Plex servers or wherever they're at that movies they might have never actually watched since they ripped them or whatever and they've got some they've got some segments out of order because they didn't they didn't really know or understand or they thought they had the right one and they really didn't and again you may find too that like some some things that you may expect to be complex really aren't for example here's the criterion bruce lee release i really wish kaleidoscape would get criterion collection if they don't have it so notice here, we did get a number of hits over the 10 minute mark. I can click and unselect them all, because again, I only want the main movie. And you know, despite this being an international um, a movie, an international release, th there's not a whole lot of subtitle complexity here. One English sub, I can take only the forest. And you know, up to you whether you know, I, I would take the English audio and the four subtitles. You might want the native audio. So maybe, maybe for the international film like this, you want the Chinese audio and you want the subtitles. So how would you do that? And how would you make sure that you, it always plays back properly? You could always get the subtitles that you want. So you would grab the Chinese audio track. You would take the main English track and you would go ahead and have Make MKV apply the force flag to the entire thing. That way you know when you play this film, you're going to get the subtitles right with the Chinese audio. But this starts to get really complex. Like if you want, say in this, you know, this film, you wanted the original Chinese audio, but you wanted the English dub, but you need the subtitles to go with the uh, original Chinese audio if you wanted it. In that case, you wouldn't want to put the force flag on here. And you'd probably want to just give this a different name not call it forced because it's not forced, but it, it gets, it starts to get complex because if you needed the main subtitle track to go with the Chinese audio, but you needed forced items out of the forced subset of that to go with the English audio. Now you've got an MKV with two audio streams, two subtitle streams, which one is the default, which one is going to play by default. You're going to have to, every time you go to play the movie, you're going to have to figure it out, right? You're going to have to make selections and you're going to have to set it up appropriately. Last thing I want to show has to do with TV series, the release of Neon Genesis Evangelion. So you might think that a given disc for a television series would automatically have four or five or six playlists representing an individual episode. And most of the time you might be right, but not always. Here you go. One playlist, one playlist, all the chapters, whether this disc had three or four or five or six episodes on it, uh, you could play it to know for sure, or maybe look at the information that came with the release. You know, maybe it's just different segments in the map or whatnot. But there it is. Every episode on this disc mushed together into one single playlist. So if you rip this to individual files, prepare to do some work, because if you want to tweeze this out into episode one and two and three and four, you're going to be doing that by hand. Um, I would recommend looking at some tools like MKV Tool Nix, uh, with some of its plugins and, and things would allow you to like segment one MKV file into multiple MKV files based on 
based on cutting at certain chapters, which means that you're going to have to pull this into an MKV. You're going to have to get some record of, okay, what, which chapters represent which episodes, where are the cuts, set up MKV tool, buy the show on iTunes. And not only that, but let's see, one, two, three, four English subtitle tracks with the four stuff. I guarantee you that there's some, there's some stuff that you need if all you keep is the English language here. Uh, because a lot of times in anime or, or like Japanese anime content, there might be signs in kanji that show up on the screen and they'll subtitle like what the sign or the written text uh, is supposed to say. If you don't care about that, you could skip it. But if you really want the, you know, the proper experience, then, then you need to do the work. This Ripping this show you're, you, is, is an endeavor and it's going to take you a good long while. Uh, one other uh, piece that I'll show here, uh, Rick and Morty. Let's take a look at uh, Rick and Morty Season 1. So here's what you really would expect to get. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, 11 episodes. I thought Rick and Morty was 10 but basically 11 playlists that look like they would represent an individual episode of the show. And then there's one playlist here with 60 chapters that would be all of the episodes in the show. So that's another way that you might see something like this segmented. And in here, I guess it's nice. We have true HD audio. We could check off the core. We could check off a commentary. We could check off the main subtitle. We could take the forced ones and so on. But the one thing that I want to point out is just because we have... Uh, you know, 11-ish, 10, 11-ish episodes of a show mastered into the disc in some kind of an order, that doesn't mean that this is episode one, and this is two, and this is three, and this is four, and so on. Ripping TV shows is just a tremendous amount of work, and you may very well find, you have to corroborate that uh, that each individual MKV uh, which episode of the show is it? Because the order, the order could be flipped. I believe, like Walking Dead, uh, at one point in my earlier DIY media server life, um, I, I ripped a bunch of the Walking Dead seasons into MKVs, and if I recall correctly, the the order of the playlist did not correspond to the order of the episodes, and I, I saw that in enough series that uh, just it frustrates me to no end, and be prepared. So. Another one of the many, many pitfalls of making MKVs. So you can see the more you have to figure out and prepare and structure this stuff, just like it, the complexity and the, and the pain goes through the, goes through the roof of it. And in some cases you may be spending more time, more time getting ready to watch the content than you might even spend watching the content. So that. That's a make, that's make MKV. That's, that's the idea behind MKVs and some of the things to really be aware of when you're, when you're doing this process. Is it prolific and is it on every disc? Well, no, not really. You know, especially like a 4K movie again. It has gotten generally simpler, but it's, that's not always, the, not always the case. There's a lot of pitfalls to ripping and there's a lot of ways that ripping can go wrong. So um, if you're going to go this route, you really want to think it through and make sure that you've got your reasons, you know, legitimately in mind for, for why you're doing it, what you're looking to get out of it, how you're intending to use it and so on. So look for some future videos where we'll go into, into more details of the next steps. Like how do you store this stuff on a NAS or how, how do you serve it around your house? What kind of players might you want to use for this? What are their, you know, what are the differences and capabilities and, and what does it mean for how you can actually consume your content? So if you have questions, comments, suggestions uh, to help other people fill in some gaps, if you think I'm, I'm making a mountain out of a molehill um, here with, with some of these complexities, uh, sound off. Let me know what you think um, in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe. Look for some ways in the description to support the channel. And thank you for watching.